All right, so this is uh, section 2.4, part one, uh, the remainder factor, uh, remainder and factor theorems. So we, you did this in uh, Algebra 2, so this is going to be a review, but uh, it does help to go over it again. It is a topic that can be useful when we're trying to find zeros and factor uh, bigger polynomials. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to divide polynomials using long division and uh, hopefully you remember synthetic division. So let's just get right into this. So there's two reasons why you'd want to actually uh, long divide a polynomial. One would be just to factor it, and two would be to find the zeros. Now keep in mind, factoring and finding zeros is almost the same thing, but we do need to know the difference between the two. Factoring it is getting it into terms that look like this, okay? And finding the zeros are going to be finding actual values like x equals. So what we have here is we have a polynomial that is a cubic function. It's a third degree. 6x to the third minus 25x squared plus 18x plus 9. If we know that one of the zeros is x equals 3, then that means that by the zero product property, that means that x minus 3 has to be one of the factors. So what that means is, is that if we know x minus 3 is one of the factors, we know that this polynomial can be divided evenly by x minus 3. So we can actually divide it as you see it right here using long division. So what we do, as a reminder, we always use the leading term. And we look to see how many times the leading term goes into each of these. So everything about long division using polynomials is exactly the same as it is with numbers. We're going to take this x and we're going to say x goes into 6x to the third. And we're going to say it goes in 6x squared times. And the reason for that is because x times 6x squared equals 6x to the third. Then what we do is once we've figured out, okay, 6x to the third divided by x is 6x squared, then we're going to multiply both of our terms through on this first term. x times 6x, uh, x times 6x squared is 6x to the third. Negative 3 times 6x squared is negative 18 x squared. And then what we do is we draw this line and we subtract. 6x to the third minus 6x to the third is nothing. That cancels out. Negative, and don't forget there's a subtraction sign here. Negative 25x squared minus a negative 18x squared is negative 7x squared. And then we bring these down. Now we do the same thing over again, but now we're looking to see how many how many times x goes into this value right here. So now x is going to go into this value down here. So x goes into negative 7x uh, squared, negative 7x times. And then we go through the same thing. We multiply x times negative 7x is negative 7x squared. Negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21x. And then we subtract. Negative 7x squared minus a negative 7x squared. That cancels out. 18 minus 21 is a negative 3x. And then we bring down our 9. And the 9 was brought down here. We didn't really use it. So we bring down here plus 9. And then we ask ourselves, x now goes into negative 3x, negative 3 times, and then we go through and multiply. x times negative 3 is negative 3x, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, and because we knew that x minus 3 was going to go into it evenly, we get a remainder of 0. This cancels out, and this cancels out. So what we're left with is we have x minus 3 times 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. So the idea of this is we're trying to factor completely. So now we don't need to use long division anymore because we know how to factor quadratics. So we just try and factor this quadratic. And remember, this x minus 3 is here because we're trying to factor our original function completely. We were already told that x minus 3 was one of our factors because x equals 3 was one of our zeros. So x minus 3 has to be part of our, our final answer. Now we just need to factor what, what is left. So here's where we do our, uh, we, we test. So we can go 3x and 2x, and then we're going to go minus 
Oh, let's do minus. We'll do plus two, minus three, and then we're going to check this. So three times negative three. Okay, so we multiply that out. That's uh, six x squared minus 9x plus 4x minus 6. So that's 6x squared minus 5x. Okay, that doesn't work. So now we got to try something different. Okay, so we go through and we try that, and we're going to get, hopefully, let's try 6x and 1x. Let's see if this works. I don't think this is going to work either. Okay, we're going to try one more. And you can kind of see this is sometimes the way factoring works. You've got to try all your different possibilities. So the only other option here would be minus 3 and plus 1. And that's not going to work either. So I'm going to go on, we're going to figure, we're going to realize that this is not factorable because we've tried all the different things that we could do. And this is factored completely. So sometimes that's what it takes is for you to go through and do it that way and try the factoring just like I did. I didn't do this ahead of time. I did this factoring just like I normally would and we found out that it doesn't work. So this is factored completely, and sometimes that works that way, okay? So let's go on to another one, okay? Factor completely using long division. So uh, why don't you guys try this one on your own? We just did one, so try this one on your own, see how you do, uh, and we will, um, you know, and if you have questions, you can obviously ask in class, but I will go over it in a second. So after going through this, you should have gotten x squared plus x minus 2 as your, uh, when you divided it out, it comes out even, no remainder. And then once you have your x squared plus x minus 2, you should have continued to factor that to be x plus 2 and x minus 1. So this is factored completely now with the x plus 6, x plus 2, and the x minus 1. Okay, so also we got to talk about how to divide and what happens when we don't get, when we actually have a remainder. So let's do that real quick. Everything is going to work out the exact same way. We're still going to set this up. 3x plus 2 on the outside, and we have our 9x to the third. Now, we're missing an x squared term, so we are going to include that on our division. It makes it a whole lot easier if you do that, minus x, minus 3. Okay, so we go through. 3x goes into 9x to the third, 3x squared times. And we go through. 3x times 3x squared is 9x to the third. 2 times uh, 3x squared is... 6x squared, so now we subtract. Notice this is why you want to have the 0x squared there. So now we subtract, the 9x to the thirds cancel out. 0 minus 6x squared is negative 6x squared. Bring down the negative x. 3x goes into negative 6x squared, negative 2x times. So now we multiply 3x times negative 2x is negative 6x squared. 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x, and then we subtract again. These cancel out, negative, oops, Sorry. okay, negative x minus a negative 4x is going to be a positive 3x. Okay, bring down your 3, 3x goes into 3x one time. 3x times 1 is 3x. 2 times 1 is 2. 3x's cancel out, but here's where our remainder comes in. So negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 5. So our remainder is a negative 5. So how do we write that? What we do is we have to write our remainder over the original divisor, which means we can't factor this anymore. So our answer here is 3x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus a negative 5 over our original divisor, which is 
3x plus 2. So that is what our final answer looks like. Okay, so we have another one here. Uh, I want you to try this one on your own and see what you come up with. Okay, so here's our answer. We have 2x squared plus 27. That's what you got when you divided. We had a remainder of 57x minus 200. And then over the divisor, which is x squared minus 2x plus 7. So again, try and follow along with the work. If you need to pause it and take a look, that's fine. Uh, if you have more questions in class, if you're not sure how we got something, then please just let me know. Okay, so let's talk about synthetic division, because synthetic division is quite a bit quicker. But understand, it's a shortcut to long division, but your term has to be in this form. It's got to be a binomial that is that basically allows us to know what our zero is. So basically what's going to happen is, if we know what the zero is going to be, so if I know that this is going to be the zero, meaning x equals 3, is our zero here, then we can synthetically divide. And we do that by just putting a three up on the top here. And then on the inside will be the coefficients of everything that we have. Now remember, if there's a missing term, it's gotta be represented as a zero. So this will be six, negative 25, positive 18, and nine. So we're gonna try and factor this equation using synthetic division. Now, keep in mind, if we get a remainder of 0, then we know that x minus 3 has to be one of our factors. So here's how we synthetically divide. We bring our first value down. So that comes straight down. 3 times 6 is 18. And then we add straight down. That's negative 7. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Adding straight down is negative 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, adding straight down is 0. So there's our remainder. So now, because our remainder is 0, we know that x minus 3 is one of our factors. And then the leftover numbers are the coefficients to our now quadratic. Because if we divide it out in x minus 3, then our power is going to have to lower by 1. So we will be left with 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. And if you look back, this is the same exact problem that we started off with, okay, that we were not able to factor any further, but you always want to check to see if you can factor further. Okay, so now that we're down to a quadratic, we could try and factor further to figure out if it's possible. Okay, but this one we already know is not, so here's our final answer. Okay, so what I want you to do is do this next one on your own. Try and synthetically divide this and see if you can get it all the way broken down, uh, see if it factors any further uh, than what you have. Um, and let's, you know, get as far as you can, and let's see how you do. So when you divide by synthetic division here, you should have gotten zero as a remainder with our x plus 2, so we divided. We got x plus 2, so this is what it would look like factored. Now, it did just say divide, so if it did just say divide, then really our answer would be, what this part is, but keep in mind the only reason why we're really doing this is to factor and find zeros. Because we are left with a uh, cubic here, we're not going to worry about factoring this any further for right now, not unless it was something with a common factor or something like that. Uh, we will talk about that in the next section. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, I, I do know that we've done this before, or you did this before in Algebra 2, so uh, if you have any questions, make sure you bring those to class and I will see you then.